Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Make sure you're praying. Make contact with someone. Let's pray this morning. And the brother get to push the brother get to the brother. And the laka to shabran ya na ba. Hey, 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 hey,
word in my spirit speedily 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 that's what the spirit of the lord is ministering to me speedily speedily the bible says the word of god is quick and powerful and i prophesy that word to someone speedily let that be the anthem of your life speedily i speak it by the spirit the grace that brings things speedily the grace that makes for the word performance speedily 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 the anointing comes speedily their mantles come speedily finances speedily open doors speedily mantalakato seketelekata says do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess he says but be ye filled with the holy ghost speaking to yourselves in psalms hymns spiritual songs making melody in your heart to the lord father tonight we have come and in the name of jesus christ we declare that your word is prevailing over our lives your word is causing us to become manifestations of what it has spoken about. You have spoken great things concerning us. Spirit of the living God, this is Koinonia. We grant you unrestrained access to change, to heal, to deliver, to lift, to bless, to restore. Let Jesus be glorified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. I want you to be very sensitive tonight. Don't be distracted. The remaining days that we have are times that will require acute sensitivity. Be sensitive. Be sensitive to the things that the Holy Ghost is doing.
when you see God move like this, it's not a distraction. He's changing lives. He's changing lives. That a challenge of 10 years can just shrink within a minute in his presence. That's what this is all about, my brothers and sisters. This is not, we're not acting movies. God is changing lives. You see, if you are not anointed, you are not a blessing. You truly are not. It's, it, has, it has nothing to do, listen, listen. It has nothing to do with a name or a big man. It is the only way you can bless people. Are we together now? Yes. These precious people that you see God visiting, only God can tell what challenges they left from their homes and they came to sit. People have traveled. You heard of the gentleman 22 hours on the road only to come and sit down. Is there no band in Lagos? Is there no Bible in Lagos? It will be not only unfair, in fact, it will be seen if that gentleman leaves Lagos and comes down to sit here, giving God his time and attention, and we talk nonsense and garbages and waste his time and share the grace and just shake him and he returns back frustrated. How then do you know God was here? Lord, you took my away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me the right new song to sing to me. That's what I will lift up my voice. You took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me happen that we stop being men of God and become entertainers pray one minute and say Lord keep this fire fresh keep this fire fresh pray keep the fire fresh it's part of the meeting please Lord keep the anointing fresh Keep the grace fresh. Keep the signs and wonders fresh. Let the impact be fresh. Let the revelations be fresh. Are you praying? It's a very serious prayer. Please pray. fresh pray don't let the devil deceive you try to be as brief as I can be so that we will pray and trust God for his grace 
1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. The God of patterns. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. I'm teaching tonight on the God of patterns. The Lord asked me to repeat this again. Guiding us to understand certain truths. Paul is speaking and he says, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, please listen, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. This is our challenge tonight. Read the remaining part. Please go back to verse 10. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Why? 11. He says, For no other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work, what sort or what quality it is. 14. If any man's work abide, that means endure, he says, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Just stop there. The reward is not just for those that build. The reward is for those whose building, whose work abide. That when the fire tries it and it stands, then you qualify for a reward. Jesus, we love you. We are here to hear you. We are here to be changed by your word. Who will not trust your wisdom? We give up on the wisdom of this world that turns to naught. And we subscribe to the wisdom of the spirit. We pray, oh God, in a mighty way. That your word will build our hearts tonight we thank you for all those connecting from around the world let your word bless build edify in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please write this down god is a god of patterns when you're done writing it you're going to say it god is a god of patterns That in God's economy, action is not enough. In fact, it is not even certain steps of action can even be termed disobedience. In God's economy, results are not enough. God is obsessed with methodologies and how things arrive in this kingdom. And this is what I want to teach you. So write it down that God is a God of patterns. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Very popular scripture. And then we we'll define what a pattern is. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way. Notice that the way is in the path. Are, are you getting it now? He's talking about a good way. But you have to find the old paths, then you find the good way. And it says, and you walk therein, and you shall find rest. But a very stubborn generation will reply thus, we will not walk therein. Why? Because we are educated. Why? Because we are civilized. Why? Because we are scientists. Why? Because we live in a very, in a 21st century world. And there is the recommendation. This is what you are looking for, rest. And the author of rest is prescribing for you a pattern that you have to search. Stand, see, ask, walk. Stand, you must trust God to see. Then you are going to ask questions somewhere in that journey. And then you must obtain grace to walk. And the Bible says if you do it, you will find rest. Not for your neighbor's soul. You will find rest for your soul. A pattern, write it down, please. 
the Lord asked me to teach this again. A pattern is a modus operandi, a, a prescribed methodology. A pattern is a prescribed, it can even mean an authorized methodology. A pattern refers to the correct way things are done. So when we talk of patterns, we're talking about a modus operandi, a prescribed and an authorized methodology. The correct way things are done. They are called patterns. Write this down again. Patterns are pathways that guarantee predictable outcomes. Patterns are pathways that guarantee predictable outcomes. So we're dealing with the methodology of the spirit, his system of achieving his dimension of results. Let me, let me start tonight by letting us, reminding us for some of us that in the dealing, listen please, in the dealing of God with man, you are not at liberty, you are not given the privilege of suggesting how God deals with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is when it has to do, creativity is not needed when you are dealing with intimacy. It is when you begin to manifest dominion, execution, legislation, that's when you need creativity. When you are working with God, your brain and your intelligence is not supposed to be part of an influencer or a contributor. God is the ultimate determinant of the formula that defines your relationship with him. This looks very hard because, you see, we live in a, please come gentlemen, we live in a liberal society where I cannot obey till I contribute. Are we together now? Yes. If I say walk this way, I have to reach a consensus with you to agree with me first. Unfortunately, you are not dealing with a servant. Don't forget that God is not only savior. When you get to the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus is king. The word king there means owner. It means sovereign controller. Are we together now? So in the dealings of God with men, you have to understand that there is nothing in your work with God that adds to him. He reduced something about himself and put it in you so that you will enjoy the joy of feeling like you are bringing completeness. But what you think you are bringing, the worship and everything, it was there before you came. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Let me tell you the truth. God truly, truly, it is true that God has a need, but the need was created by him to give us a chance to feel the satisfaction of relationship. The need is not something he discovered in himself and then he found out that man had an argument to solve it. No. The same way you are playing with a child and the child is obsessed to do something to please you, then you limit yourself deliberately to give the child an opportunity to find fulfillment. That's what God did and that's what he does in the dealings with men. So when he seems to allocate a dimension of his kingdom to men, it's not because he does not have an intelligence to still rule earth from heaven. Are you getting it now? He brought men to reveal another dimension of him and then to give them the opportunity to partake experientially in that dominion. This is a mindset we must have when approaching God. Let me tell you, everything that disobedience brings between you and God, you are the only one that loses. Let me repeat, you are the only one that loses. God's concern about men is termed love, not lack. I have loved you with an everlasting love. When God reaches down to man, it is not because he cannot do without man. He has chosen to limit himself. He's a betrother. Are we together now? He has brought himself, he has subscribed himself to the similitude of marriage, where he now becomes inseparable with his bride. And so that responsibility of being a faithful husband will always make him to go and seek the bride, regardless of the level of halotry and deviation. But let us get it very clearly that in the dealings of men, you don't sit with God in a round table and say, Lord, 
you said I should follow this way, but me, I am telling you, this is what I feel like. No, you are not given the liberty of creativity as far as intimacy is concerned. He allows your creativity to function when you now begin to legislate across the strata of human existence. That means we are not at liberty to invent a new formula to seeking and knowing God. It matters that you know God according to his prescribed formula. You can try to route the knowledge of God through many formulas. The Bible says, once have I spoken. Listen carefully. It says, twice have we heard that all power belongs to God. That means I can sit under someone and then he will teach me about the constellation, teach me about stargazing. And after all, it's still God's creation. You see that? Yes. But God will not be glorified because it is not his authorized mechanism for knowing him. You will sit down with someone who is practicing yoga or zodiac or scientology and you will find a lot of similitudes in his teachings that reflect what the holy spirit is teaching you sometimes even word for word but just because you agreed on a point does not mean the road you are following is the same are you getting what i'm saying now yes otherwise there is no need to recommend the bible as the exclusive manual that helps men to know god because Parts of scripture appears in almost every other religious book. Is that true? Either as a citation, a quotation, and, and so on and so forth. The danger of seeking God through another pattern is that you are going to find many things that he created but not endorsed by his presence. And it will destroy you because even Satan was created by God. That means you should be able to listen to him. Demons were not created by, by some big bang thing that happened somewhere. The fallen angels were once in the heavenlies. They operated there. Satan himself, Lucifer, the son of the morning, the custodian of the mysteries of the heavens. That was his office. Just because a librarian offended you and you casted him down, don't you think he still has some information you can tap from? That's exactly what the fallen angels did to the daughters of men. They didn't just come and meet with the daughters of men. They came and supplied an information. And they, remember, the agenda right from Genesis chapter 3 is that God is hiding something from you, man. Remember Satan's proposition. Man, come and let me give you enlightenment. God is hiding certain things because of his insecurity. He doesn't want to reveal something to you. But we are already privy to it. In other words, God hates us because he thinks this, this is a devil now. And the philosophy he's selling to man. That God is insecure and because we know everything about him. That's why he wants to discourage us. Now you give us time and let's bamboozle you. Get my teaching, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I teach them on these kinds of concepts. And so every time Satan meets a man. The point of contact is always enlightenment. It, the idea that Satan meets men and makes them dull is a fallacy. You are joking. Anybody who truly meets Satan will be enlightened. Are we together? But the problem is the knowledge that you will be given is corrupted knowledge. You are eating of the tree that contains both good and evil and because it is not God's authorized system of knowing him you will find out that your grandfather can look at you and you will say I broke my leg and he will laugh you will say come he will slap your leg three times slap this one three times and say lie down and put a green leaf and you wake up jumping playing football in the evening my brother and my sister that was the power of God at work it could not have been the devil but it is still witchcraft why is it witchcraft because it was not routed by the authorized channel which is the Christ are you getting the thing now you cannot doubt the result if the result just happened there this guy just fixed a cracked bone you see all these funny magicians around you go online and you watch these magicians that can bamboozle you some of them are not faking it they have mastered the the principles of the realm of the spirit that govern the second heavens and they bamboozle the earth 
they turn our minds to nonsense they can remove their head and put it back and do all kinds of stupid things and make man wonder what he has believed forever yet in it is still corrupted knowledge that means if the only basis for our conviction is the results that are produced we're going to get into witchcraft and we're get, going to get into any kind of thing because believers are so desperate for results that we do not care the methodology just give me the healing anointing it doesn't matter how it comes it doesn't matter what i consult just give me the grace to minister to the sick just give me access the worst is even revelation because right now you go online you can google faith and just faith that you google will come out from more than 100 different perspectives because almost every religion is communicating it and because of your appetite for vastness you can begin to tap into all kinds of things Go online now. The word for 2019. Bam. And you are going to see zodiac signs will come up and they will begin to manipulate it and tell you 2019 shall be the year of A and B and C. And one, one man of God somewhere, one rabbi somewhere, one, one monk somewhere can come up with a prophetic word. And as a man of God, if you are not careful, out of pressure, you will consult with those references and smile and look at it. And then look for a modern, a new living translation of what you just read. And come up with it and say, look, I, I sought the Lord thrice. Like Paul. And he didn't say my grace is sufficient. He said, thus said the Lord. So, 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 yeah, is the year of nonsense. And you find out that the people never become what God said. We must be careful as we pursue knowledge. And we pursue enlightenment knowledge is like a knife you must be careful how you hold it you can hold it and injure yourself just because it is light does not mean it is of god remember god made many lights god made how many lights the light that is used by a monk the light that is used in a hindu temple the light that is used everywhere all power belongs to him We're talking about patterns so we are not given the liberty to invent our pathway and our formula for knowing God in one of the teachings that I did on patterns if you remember I showed you instances in the Bible where men tried to suggest and even take initiatives on behalf of God is that true and you will think that God would applaud them for their intelligence they were punished and punished severely Uza punished for nothing. Patterns are very, very important. Thank you. Write this down, please. Success is proof that a pattern has been diligently adhered to. Success is proof that a pattern has been diligently adhered to. Failure is also proof that a pattern has been ignored or violated. If it is true that patterns guarantee predictable outcomes, then success is proof that a pattern has been adhered to and failure is proof that a pattern has been violated or ignored or not thoroughly followed. Hallelujah. When you watch a relay the system of a relay is that you run 100 meters and then hand over the button now imagine that the person who started from the first um, the first point he just ran and felt that the remaining will be late they will not be as fast as him and he said get out of the way and it takes the initiative to create a new rule and runs around the field by himself and arrives first will he be awarded why not because he did not arrive there remember arrival first is the basis for reward but because on the way he violated a pattern he would have wasted his time that means there are many people doing very nice things at the end you will see that this thing should produce a result but the result did not come that means somewhere along that path a formula was corrupted so follow me tonight 
as God helps us to fine tune, is, is, is a retrospect of our approach to many things. So that we'll find the gray areas and the missing links. <laughs> Based on what I know, anointing plus prayer plus A plus this equal to a life of signs and wonders. And I did everything. And at the end of it, it didn't happen. It should happen. It means something happened on the way. Are we together now? Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible is full of patterns. I wrote down a few things here. There is a pattern for genuine salvation. We are not left at liberty to guess how to save men. There is a very exact spiritual pattern by which men, God would not desire the whole world saved and then leave a vague pattern. No. That means you can know assurance of salvation is not based on falling or shaking. It's based on the awareness of the integrity that backs the pattern you follow. Are we together now? The Bible is very clear as to how men are saved. There is no record in scripture where a man is given the liberty to inherit new birth in terms of natural descent. It's not done that way. Every individual must be given a chance to make a decision for Jesus personally. You don't receive, you can receive favor corporately, but you don't receive salvation corporately. That is the pattern allocated. That means if I bless you and I say in the name of Jesus Christ, you are hereby born again. I violated a pattern. Even if you fell down while I was speaking, you are going to where? Hell. It's as simple as that. Your falling down will not suddenly invent a new pattern. Because Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, it gives us the formula allocated. That the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. He says, for with the heart, notice how it happens. That means the pathway to salvation is that it must start with the heart, not the mouth. People who come to give their lives to Christ, not necessarily here, but around the world who pinch one another and just laugh around and don't even recite everything. When they are saying amen, that's when they are coming late and they follow the remaining crowd and go. They are not saved though. You see, let me tell you this. Don't allow the simplicity of the gospel or the complication of our modern world today make you try to think that just because a thing is simple. Remember the Bible says that he, he has hidden these things from the wise and he has given it to the foolish. God will always use the weak, the base things to confound the wise. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. Spiritual growth does not just happen. How do I know I am growing spiritually? Someone says, well, I've been in church for a long time. No, sir. Longevity in church is not a necessary requirement for spiritual growth. can be an added advantage, but it's not the basis. There is a pattern for church growth. A church does not just grow. No. It doesn't matter if the man is anointed or intelligent. There is a pattern allocated for church growth. That means if you're a man of God, you're a pastor, you're a leader, and your church is not growing. It may be an uncomfortable truth, a bitter pill to swallow, but you must humble yourself and admit that there is something I am not getting. There is something I am not seeing. Are we together now? There is a pattern. If it's the man of God who is rising up, then he's going to use his strength and draw all men to himself. The pattern is that an I, if I be lifted up, who is lifted up? Please talk to me, Koinonia. Jesus, not a prophet, not an apostle, not Joshua Selman. So when I make Koinonia about me, and I make ministry about me, I start paying the bills, I start drawing the members, I start healing them by my own strength. And let me tell you, that's a lot of work. So, if Christ is lifted, there is a promise attached to it that he will draw men to himself, not to the man of God. But it so happens that the man of God is the earthly representation of that government of heaven within that circle. So, it will look like the man is the big man. Don't get me wrong. You know that I've taught you on authority. But when it has to do with church growth, my brothers and my sisters, get out of the way. Christ 
is the head of the church. The Bible did not say we are co-heads. We are heirs. But there is one head. A human being with two heads, is that a normal human being? Please talk to me. A single body only has a chance to have one head. You can have two hands. Is that true? It's not, it's not, it, there's nothing wrong. You can have all kinds of things, but two heads is not correct. That's what Satan wanted. I used to think Satan wanted to dethrone God. He didn't want to dethrone God. He wanted a parallel government. That means you can serve either God or me until today he still wants it. Notice that when Satan comes to you, he doesn't necessarily want to stop you from doing what you are doing. He just wants to become an equivalent alternative. So you can trust God or your uncle. After all, what's the difference? It's still God using two of them. And God said there is a difference. One is flesh and blood. One is the sovereign power of God that can change men. So when you tell God thank you to the same degree, you have to turn to tell your uncle thank you. And God says, no, my jealousy will not allow this. Who is the author of that miracle? That it came from God, it only passed through your uncle. And if your uncle ever tries to make himself God, then he will know what it means to stand and battle with the Lord. This is the reason why many, many great men and women of God never rise. They are sincere, they love God. But our obsession for wanting to be the name behind every result is why we don't rise. Why were the scribes angry? It was not the healing. It was that they were not the ones shining by the healing. And Jesus said, nonsense, you are wicked people. You can allow, he healed a woman on Saturday, the Sabbath. And these wicked people came and said, why, Jesus, don't heal this woman on the Sabbath. He said, you are wicked, you are cruel people. If your animal falls into the well on the Sabbath, and you know you are going to lose money, will you say the next day, I will pick that animal? Or you will get into that well and pick him? It's a human being, not of more worth. Jesus was, they were not angry at the miracles. They were angry at the fact that they were not the face behind it. Be careful with the obsession to be the face behind things. God will place you there, but he will only place you when he's in your heart. So that men look at you, but strangely they see his face. The more they look at you, they remember him, not you. Thank God for the miracles in Koinonia. Thank God for the signs and wonders. But the more you look at Koinonia, the more you look at Joshua Selman, at the end of your speech, you say, God, you are mighty. If your statement ends by, Kai, apostle, you are a great man, then something is wrong. It means I need a retreat. Is God already helping us? Church groups. There is a pattern for wealth and abundance. This is probably one of the areas where people have abused and invented all kinds of devilish patterns. There is a spiritual pattern allocated for wealth and abundance. You can be rich through another pattern and sit back and enjoy the side effect that neglecting God in your success equation brings. Listen, let me tell you something. You see, when you look at the arrogance of those who are alienated from the life of God, because physically speaking, you see the luxuries around their lives, the cars, the houses, the opportunities, the access, security, etc. You will be tempted to think that the reason why you need God is because you don't have money. And so you ride with God until you have enough resources to not need Him. And quite honestly, there are many things on earth that can happen with money. Finance is a force. In fact, mammon is a god, authorized as a master that can be served. When you have money, there are many things that you will not need to pray about. I agree. But there is a spiritual pattern. You see, the formula, I'm just running through a few patterns with you so that you understand. Wealth and abundance, this is how it works. Satan says, bow to me and I will give you the gold. Or, remain poor and broke and serve your Jesus. And yet God comes to say, no, don't mind Satan. There is a way that you can bow to me and your heart remains with me and you will still possess that gold. And Satan says, you try it in this kingdom and see what happens. So now when you come and say, I will not bow to Babylon. I will not bow to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. 
yet i will be able to access the resources of heaven let me tell you what will happen all hell will break loose over you because satan will say you are trying to align with the patterns of heaven that a man can have gold in his hands and god in his heart is not allowed in the dealing of satan no the gold should be both in your heart and in your hand so is it possible to be wealthy and yet be madly in love with god and people tell you forget that thing there's nothing like that is that true there is a spiritual pattern for building your faith do you know there are many believers their faith has been in nursery one for more than 15 years it has not even moved to primary one not to talk of secondary school when will their faith write waek write jab and get to the university for heaven's sake let me tell you faith is like a little boy if a child does not grow something is wrong this is the victory that overcomes even our faith that means if your faith is not growing the devil is going to crush your life at some point in this world what is faith conviction simple conviction and the action that you take based on that conviction conviction should grow that means as you rise and grow in the things of god listen let me tell you you can't be born again for five years and still be asking some questions about god god are you really there if something is wrong that means your faith has not been built are you getting what i'm saying now yes that a man's faith can be built so that as a new believer come my dear this lady just gives her life to christ maybe she gave her life to christ this year and she's crying and say lord there are all kinds of challenges in my life where are you and you too you are her pastor you've been born again for 10 years and you are joining her and say lord two of us are crying where are you it, god is going to hold you responsible and say no i don't expect that from you you should have seen my faithfulness and my track record enough to believe me even if you cannot see anything this person is a young believer and God, you will be surprised that God will answer her prayer. God will owe her an explanation. And she will see the Lord come to her in a dream. My daughter. The same mistake Zechariah made was the same mistake Mary made. They punished one and God explained to the other. Because Zechariah was a priest. How shall these things be? Zechariah, you are going to interrupt something. The punishment for not discerning is we are going to lock your mouth until John is born. Mary is asking the same question. How shall these things be? And Gabriel takes out time to say, all right, let me tell you how it will happen. The power of the highest will come upon you. God has expectations. When you train somebody, you send a child to school, you are paying 100,000, and after three years, he can't speak well. You are asking him, read A, B, C, D. And he's not getting anything. And you are seeing the PTA letter, the school fees are saying, you, you go out and, and find out what is going on in that school. Either the child is not serious or the teachers are not serious. There's something somewhere. My brothers and my sisters, your faith has to grow because this kingdom operates by faith. If your faith does not grow, how do you receive? Faith is like the strength of your hand. Carry this pulpit as a gift. And give one of these little boys. They can't hold it. So God will not waste it. You have to build capacity enough to receive what you are praying for. There are many people praying for what their faith cannot receive. And so God says, build your faith so that your answer will come speedily. Lord, give me 5,000 members. And God is saying, you have not built your faith to stand the persecution that it takes to be a pastor of 5,000 people. 50 people just quarreled and said A and B about you. You are there crying all around. How in the world are you going to deal with 5,000 people? How do you build your faith? By reading newspapers? No, sir. By reading storybooks? No, sir. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That means to saturate your spirit literally with the word of God. It becomes your obsession. For every challenge in life, there is a scripture that wells up. I tell you this thing I said just even me it, it entered me it really touched me are we together 
You can't have believers, everybody claiming spiritual growth. And just because you don't have food to eat, you go around frowning at heaven. Lord, where are you that this is happening? And God will say, I thought I explained to you five years ago. I should still do it again. Are you still questioning my faithfulness? But let me tell you the fate of one who has been built. You will see him sit down and say, where is the food? And he says, I've not eaten for two days. He says, so why are you worshiping? He says, no, no, that's a, that's a done deal. We are dealing with serious matters with God. I know that my stomach needs to eat, but will I be honest to go back to God and now say, God, you are not faithful? No, we've left the issue of faithful or no faithful. Hmm. Your faith has grown. Your conviction about God. A landlord is coming in the next one hour to chase you out. And they just see you with your rechargeable. You are just listening to a song. And they say, are you aware that you are about to be embarrassed? You say, well, I have learned by experience that my life belongs to God. I've done my best. I'm not irresponsible. I would like to watch God take the shame for the first time. And while you sit down there like a fool, your foolishness will yield a result that will make you afraid. Do you know why we don't get many outstanding testimonies? I am telling you, many people don't believe God enough to receive those kinds of testimonies. If you, ever, if you ever receive an outstanding testimony, you must be willing to be in the midst of the situation that necessitates the hand of God that far. You don't hear outstanding testimonies again. Just scientific doctor testimonies all around. Because people don't have the faith enough to believe God. This is the victory. How is your job going to come? Just by submitting CVs is a joke. You are going to engage this thing till it works. Please hear what I'm saying. I'm teaching you patterns. This is what I do. Ask those who know me. Till today, till tomorrow, I speak over koinonia. I don't sit and say, okay, we are rising and, and nothing grows by itself. You engage it. Prayer department is praying on Tuesday. I'm there sending my own fire. You are there praying and God is raising other people in the name of Jesus. This ministry is rising. The word is prevailing. People are testifying. You have to build your faith. You drop your CV and complain for one year. Believe me, I tell you this in the name of the Lord. No door will open like that. Is God speaking to us now? You have a responsibility to build your faith. God has dealt unto every man a measure of faith. A measure of faith is like giving you a seed. I give you a seed. Go to the farm. Farm there. Water it. Don't see weeds and pretend that that's not weed. Weed it and make sure a harvest grows. You are brooding over every dark. You are causing lights to shine in darkness. You are brooding over every night. Listen, you get five reports in one day. Ah, something happened to somebody somewhere. The money that is supposed to come to you, your boss shut down. And you just sit down and just say, well, life, life self can be unfair. That's, that's, that's an unbelieving approach. Every night when I wake up, I'm prophesying, walking, because I know that they build it and prosper through the prophesying of a guy. Let me tell you, there are times I'm playing a message from my phone and another message from my laptop. The goal is not to hear it. The goal is to saturate the atmosphere. Two different messages at the same time. Fire is rising from here. Fire is rising from here. And you are backing it up, blasting in tongues. Sometimes it's worship song and a message. Nobody will build. There are many lazy men of God that want power. Power is not a charm. My brothers and my sisters, you walk this thing. It's the same way you, you do your, you go to the gym. Say, I have a responsibility to build my faith. I can know you have weak faith by the communication that comes out of you. The ease to discouragement is proof that your faith is small. Let me tell you. Please listen. Are we learning tonight? That means if you find out that every fiery dart, remember the instrument that quenches the fiery dart is the shield of faith. The shield of faith must be big and strong enough 
that when the devil fires the fiery dart, you can shield it. Discouragement. It can be through your biological father, through your biological mother. It can even be through a man of God. You are a useless son. You are a useless lady. Your boss will look at you and say, I've never seen a stupid worker like you. And the devil records that stupid worker and you keep hearing it. And someone whose faith has been built, as soon as you get out of his office, Shabakaposke Dabata, Rakoske Diakatosh. The Bible says that rejected stone will later be the chief cornerstone. But this is what many of us do. You sit back there and allow the word to enter and sit in your spirit. And when the word sits in your spirit, because your heart is a soil, it will grow. So what came as stupid boy will grow to become complex. It will grow to become a mindset. It will grow and then demon spirits see a nice tree of hatred growing and they come and pitch over it and you find out that bitterness the small thing that was just an insult from a careless boss has become bitterness you hate the success of every other person because of the pain of allowing a wrong seed grow you can kill seeds the bible told us that if satan can steal the word of god that means you can cast out any seed that is not of god don't allow any seed to just grow in your heart like that some of us hold on some of us have wrong associations and that's where the voice of darkness comes into our life oh i'm trusting god for grace i'm sensing the call of god upon me um, you know for ministry and the friend looks at you and says, you mean god doesn't have people again you mean god has, has, has chosen to waste his time on you and you too you sit down you will laugh as if it's just a joke in passing but later you sit down and say kai this thing and reject the call of God upon your life and start hating every man of God because they remind you of something you should be doing that you are not doing the devil is a liar tonight 99% of jealousy comes from this little thing that I'm telling you the personal defeat that was incurred because you didn't have a shield of faith any battle that you lose in the spirit realm when you see people gaining victory in the physical you will fight them you have a responsibility to build your faith i can tell you my brothers and my sisters the reason why it looks like for many of us that certain dimensions of our lives prayers are not being answered is because we don't have capacity enough to receive it i'm telling you this Are we together now when you read your bible only once a month when you read your bible only during koinonia when you open to any verse any day any time you just close your eyes j-e-s-u-s and you open ezra chapter 4 you will never build your faith that way it's amazing the things that believers do in the name of you give your spiritual life five minutes and you give your social life two hours ten hours you watch a movie from morning till night for ten hours even during work you lock the laptop with the movie go to the office continue watching it and here is something that can bless you thank god for technology there are bibles on on tape on mp3 different versions there are people who have already gathered worship songs i think there's one of this co collection of koinonia worship